Yep. Yep. Good. Good morning, everyone. It's 8 a.m. and I'd like to call the June 22nd meeting of the Finance Committee to order. Uh, we do have a quorum physically present. So pursuant to the Illinois Attorney General's guidance to public uh, bodies on the Open Meetings Act during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, members are allowed um, to uh, attend remotely. So a physical quorum of members is present. So I'll entertain a motion to permit those members that are not physically present due to the coronavirus to participate by video or teleconference. A second by Tornatori and a, or a motion by Tornatori and a second by Garcia. Any discussion? Okay, um, all those in favor? Any opposed? Okay, do we, we can do that. Do we need a roll call for this? Great, okay, uh, the motion carries, so great. So welcome everyone. Uh, can we take a roll call please? Member Chaplin. Here. Member Chavez. Member Covert. Member Desart. Here. Member DeCiani. Member Eckhoff. Member Garcia. Here. Member Hart. Here. Member Kajuki. Member LaPlante. Here. Member Ozog. Here. Member Pshalski. Member Renahan. Here. Member Rutledge. Here. Here. Member Selman. Member Tornatori. Here. And Member Zay. Here. All right, we have a quorum. Uh, I understand we do have a public comment this morning. Yes, ma'am, we do. Okay, thanks, Dan. Please go ahead. Public comment received from George Weckbacher regarding the new voting system. I am offering information to the Finance Committee that they should be aware of in an upcoming bid proposal for a new voting system for DuPage County. The county has broad requirements that need to be watched. Here are some that I found and an explanation on what may need to get changed before purchases if you can. The ones in yellow can be monitored and mandated. They meet the requirements that are specified. The rest have suggested changes. If they continue with this proposal, the notes will also be a guide to make sure it is the rules they follow. The first thing that the DuPage County cannot contract for a new voting system without the company first applying to be ILSBE C code below. JCRA Administrative Code Title 26, Part 204, Section 204.40, Paragraph E. No vendor or user shall offer to sell, lease, loan, give, or otherwise supply to any user or potential user any voting systems or voting systems component and no user shall place in operation any voting system or voting systems component without first submitting to the Illinois State Board of Elections the application for approval identified in subsection A. A completed application for approval shall be submitted not less than six months prior to any election in which a voting system or support component is proposed for use. Nine, the proposed voting equipment and software shall be a new system at the beginning of its life cycle with software that incorporates the latest and the best practices for software development. There is open source voting systems soon to be available with a company called Heart InterCivic that is working with Microsoft integrating their new election guard software to implement a new voting system article here. And there is a website specified. 10. The proposed voting equipment and software shall be certified by the EAC, Election Assistance Commission. This is not a requirement for the state of Illinois as voting systems can be certified by the ILSDE. However, if this requirement is to meet, it has to have a US EAC certification. Most of the systems in use in Illinois do not meet this requirement. US EAC certified systems can be checked here. Again, website provided. Number 11, the proposed voting equipment and software shall be EAC certified for compliance with BVSG, Voluntary Voting System Guideline 2005. It's a 16 year old standard that has been replaced by BVSG 1.1, 2017, and is in the process of being replaced by BVSG 2.0, 2021. At minimum, DuPage needs to require BVSG 1.1 which is the standard now for the state of Illinois set by Illinois SBE in 2018. <coughs> 12, the proposed voting equipment and software shall be VSTL, the Voting System Test Laboratories Tested. 
Currently, there are only two labs certified as VSTL Pro, VNV, and SLI. Number 16, the contractor shall provide results from security penetrations testing and risk assessment on the software in use. There should be no modems on machines. Transfer of data should be manually transferred from the memory storage device to a secure location. The issue becomes with machines that use voter registration data for verification of voter on some of the newer election electronic voting machines. I'm sorry, it's just any memory device should be tied to a user ID and that ID information needs to be recorded when the memory device is utilized. Number 17, the software shall provide for hardware diagno diagnostics, logic and accuracy testing and post election audits. The audits need to include adjudication logs that identify adjudicator and what was adjudicated. Number 18, the software shall run Windows 10 or a self-contained server without external network access. Software needs to be verified prior to upload that it is the exact version that was approved for the system. Any modified software needs to be rejected. Number 20, the software shall allow for simultaneous user access. Multiple users shall be able to work on the same election at the same time. Each user has to have a separate user ID, no simultaneous logon of a single user or shared IDs. System should warn administrators of unknown user logs on or attempt to log on. Number 22, the software shall contain detailed audit logs of all actions and changes made at the database configuration and voting levels. Need to verify adjudication changes are included in the audit logs. Number 26, the software, I'm so sorry, there's only two more. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The software shall be at the beginning of its life, with no planned date of obsolescence. If his is beginning of life, it is a new system which requires VVSG 1.1 2017 certification or better. The software shall be EAC certified at VSTL tested. This is not a requirement in our state, however, this is a good requirement that will ensure that the system is better tested. Most of the systems in Illinois are not EAC certified. That concludes this comment. I appreciate that. And um, on to Chairman's re remarks. Um, I'm happy to announce that we will officially launch DuPage County's annual budget survey later today. I want to thank all the county board members for their input. I think we had great involvement in crafting and developing the survey. As you know, the survey provides vital input from the public on our financial plan, so I'm grateful for your assistance through the process. We'll be pushing out um, the survey through press release, social media posts, and uh, the newsletter this week and throughout the summer. So please share the survey with your constituents however you can. We're hoping for um, a really great response from our residents. So. With that, we will move on to our presentation. We have a reinvestigate presentation by uh, Greg Bevelo. Greg, welcome. Or Nick, welcome. I'm going to start off. Welcome to both of you. I think Wendy is going to pull it up here shortly. And I just wanted to uh, start off. Greg is going to handle all the rest of the slides. But the first one, I just wanted to kind of um, walk through with the committee what our planned presentation schedule is moving forward based upon the input that everybody gave at the last finance meeting. Obviously today we're going to be talking about reinvest DuPage. Um, our next planned one would be July 13th, regular finance would be the county government allocation priorities, including the health department. And with these, you will see, we are also going to probably schedule a special call in the afternoon just as a safeguard in case if we run out of time in the morning, we will have that ability in the afternoon. So we may very well be canceling each one of those if we get through the, the presentation and we're comfortable, but we'll have that in reserve if we need it. So you'll, you'll probably see that. We are doing a special call for sure on uh, the 13th in the afternoon for Choose DuPage, the other part of Greg's presentation since he's doing Reinvest DuPage and then his other priorities with uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau and an Arts DuPage. That will also be July 13th. Um, and then we have on August 10th, Mary Keating Community Services and the nonprofit agencies. That one will likely be regular and special call just with the volume. 
And then our thought would be August 24th, we're gonna talk about the whole portal system. We're not gonna open up the portal system at that point, but we will likely have something developed and be able to, to demo that. And if concurrence by the board, we would then move forward, maybe opening the portal September 1st. Um, what our plan for all of these would be to have them at the end of the agenda because there will be no action items on it. Today, you have the, the reinvest to page at the beginning of the agenda because we have action items in there, but the other ones after this will likely be at the end so you can get regular business done first. So um, uh, any questions on, on that? Otherwise, we can kind of dive right into reinvest to page and Greg Betteloff. All right, Greg, good luck. I think I have a presentation as well. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for supporting the business community with the Reinvest DuPage program. I know most of you are familiar with the previous versions of the Reinvest DuPage program associated with the CARES Act. So my presentation will be brief today, simply highlighting some of the changes and the differences in the new version of the Reinvest DuPage program, which is obviously a program designed to support small businesses, Operational expenses for not-for-profits, emphasis on operational, not programmatic expenses for not-for-profits, working very closely with Mary Keating's group to make sure we don't have any duplicate efforts there, and independent contractors or 1099 slash gig workers. Can I get the next slide, please? So the initial allocation for this recommendation is $15 million. I know I spoke with some of you Individually, about a $30 million allocation in two tranches, the second tranche coming with the second tranche of money coming to the county from the federal government. My understanding on recommendation from the state's attorney's office that that could potentially obligate future boards to an allocation of funds that they would appreciate the, the right and, and have the right to vote on themselves. So we're just asking for $15 million, including $150,000 worth of administrative costs Clearly DuPage County is the administrating agency in conjunction with Choose DuPage. And again, we're trying to help out small businesses, not-for-profits and independent contractors. So that dollar amount is a little different from the first one, but it's in line with um, the general request from Choose DuPage. Next slide, please. So it's the criteria remain basically unchanged with a couple of uh, nuances. Again, you have to be located in DuPage County. This time we are recommending that grant amounts be up to $50,000. That is an increase from the $15,000 max amount that we talked about last time and that we administered last time. And the revenue cap for the businesses applying this time would be 20 million. The last time the highest we ever went was 4 million. So we did a survey of the 95,000 plus businesses in DuPage County and found that the bell curve where the majority of the businesses lie is in that $20 million range and we would be covering a lot more businesses. Again, you have to prove revenue decline due to COVID-19. We made a change, you have to be in business as of January 1, 2019. I'll get to that a little later. Previously, it was the middle of March, kind of the onset of the pandemic. You have to be in good standing with the Secretary of State. And for independent contractors, the grant amounts will be up to 15,000. That's an increase from 7,500 less than 250,000 in gross income. Last time it was 100,000. And again, 50% um, of that work must come from 1099 efforts and you must be in business as of January 1 of 2019. So the main differences are going to 20 million in annual revenue for businesses, 250,000 in income for independent contractors, 50,000 grant amount versus 15,000, for businesses and grant amounts up to 15,000 for independent contractors with an earlier start date. Next slide, please. So this year, or, or this version, um, because we're kind of coming out of the pandemic, in order to show revenue decline for the previous program, it was a little easier to be perfectly blunt because we were in the middle of the pandemic. As we're now coming out of the pandemic, we wanna make sure that we're helping businesses that have losses due to COVID-19 but who may not have already fully recovered. So we're going to be asking for a full year of income and revenue data from January 1, 2019 through December 31, 2019, and then the same period for 2020. Again, we'll be accepting tax returns, ST1s, P&L statements, sales tax receipt runs and the like in an effort to help as many businesses as possible. Uh, any COVID relief funds that any business or independent contractor received previously during any previous um, program 
will be included as revenue. That is per the federal government guidelines. A grant amount may not exceed the amount of demonstrated need. So if you're showing as a business $30,000 worth of revenue decline, you can't get a $50,000 grant. You can only get up to the amount of your demonstrated revenue decline. And you must also um, provide proof of, of the acceptable format of the revenue decline. We just, we can't take Word documents, we can't take Excel spreadsheets. It has to be a written overview of your revenue decline with appropriate supporting documents. Next question, or next slide, please. Um, this is on advice of the state's attorney and my board that the recommendation is that the members of the county board their chairman and immediate families are ineligible, members of Choose Do Pages board and the grant decision committee, which I'll get to a little bit of the process later, are ineligible for any of the grant awards. Next slide, please. Very quickly, the process, assuming you approve this today, we would plan on opening our portal on June 28th. We would have a webinar two days from now on June 24th, uh, English with Spanish translation. Once applications are submitted into our portal, Choose Do Page staff does an initial review to make sure they meet the base criteria. We then ask for support documents to be submitted into our secure online portal, which would include the, the, the items I mentioned earlier, proof of revenue decline, et cetera. Our applications are then reviewed by Choose Do Page staff. If we recommend approval, they advance to a grant committee. The grant committee is volunteers from the Choose Do Page board that includes experts in the field of legal finance and audit. Once those are approved, we submit them to the county auditor, the county finance department and others here at the county. They make their, uh, they do their review and then they are brought in front of you for final approval. And once the county board makes the final approval, the checks are cut to the grantees. I, I will note that last time we did this program, we did proof of uh, appropriate use of funds. So last time, if you recall, we had 1,629 businesses and independent contractors that received funds. We followed up with them to say, you have to show us that you use the funds in accordance with the CARES Act guidelines. We received uh, that proof from about 1,200 of the 1,600 recipients, which I think is phenomenal. At that point, we talked to the finance department, audit, county senior staff, and because there was no real hard guidelines with the CARES Act in terms of you have to have every single one show it, we determined that that was enough that it would pass a, a good sniff test, if you will. This time around, we're not going to be asking businesses to prove that they use the funds in accordance with ARPA, but we have very strong attestation language in the application that basically promises that they will use the funds in accordance with the ARPA guidelines and we reserve the right to audit that. So I think that's my last slide. Oh, our timeline as I touched upon. Uh, so the applications would be, uh, the application portal would be open on June 28th. Uh, you're not using GuideHouse, it's my understanding this year. So we've been working with Jeff and Mary Catherine and their team. And assuming everything goes according to plan, the first batch which would come before you for approval would be on August 10th. Great. I'm happy to answer any Great. questions. Great, thank you so much. So we have questions from member Chavez, the member, uh, Krajewski. Member Chavez, please go ahead. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I just wanted to um, address something that came up in the committee with this, and that was a question about the eligibility of board members, and it came up as an ethical and legal question, so I do believe that state's attorney has more information on that this morning that I was hoping that he could present to clarify. For Member Chavez, um, just going to sort of go over it broadly, there are ethical obligations beyond what's in uh, grant agreement uh, with regards to um, county board members participation in, um, in this case, a grant program which, uh, they vote on. And there's some attorney general opinions and also some case, uh, some case law and also some statutes that prohibit county board members basically voting um, to either give themselves contracts or in this instance um, that the contract is a grant agreement. Um, this was included in the CARES Act because uh, you all asked to have it in there and it wasn't illegal. And if it's something you felt strongly about having stated, I don't see an issue with it. Um, but just I, the, the concern with that is always um, once it's in there, sometimes people feel like if they get rid of it, they can get rid of the conflict issue. 
that's uh, that's not the case. So if there's any questions or specific questions, I'm happy to answer. Them. Thank you, Connor. Member Chavez, does that answer your question? Okay, thank you so much. Um, member uh, Krajewski, Member Rutledge, then Member Tornatori. Okay. Thanks for your presentation, Greg. And to my understanding, so it's just the, the only thing you're looking at is the revenue decline between 19 and 20 to be eligible? We are reserved. In general, yes, Member Krajewski. So I guess my question would be if, because I, I, I know this is, is that revenue has declined in 20, yet because mean and lean um, and had to work, profitability was up. So right. profits up in 20 over 19, however, revenue has declined. Are they eligible? Yes, they would be eligible under that circumstance. Okay. But I should have mentioned, I apologize. Uh, we added language in this agreement that Choose to Page reserves the right to ask for additional information from the applicant to make sure that, to be blunt, is the business still open? Is the business's 2021 revenue far exceeded 2019 revenue um, so that we're putting the funds, generally speaking, to the best use possible to help businesses that are in the Because I, I think a number of businesses' revenue has declined profitability for 2020 may not have declined. Correct. But those people would all be out. Correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, Member Rutledge. Thank you, uh, Chairwoman Chaplin. Um, Connor, this is probably more a Connor question. Um, so based on the county board are not eligible, if a county board member was employed by a company that was applying for grant money, would they also be excluded? Not sure that that actually applies to our board. And it's so it would depend uh, on the capacity in which they were employed, I would say. I didn't research the employee side of things. It was more the concern was if a county board member was applying for a business that they own or that they were a significant owner of, I, my gut would say that it would be something they should take a look at with the ethics officer before they voted on it. Thanks, Connor. Thank you. Um, member Tunatori, then member Ozak. Thank you. I guess, uh, thanks, Greg, by the way. I'm not sure what significant owner means, and that was going to be part of my question. How tenuous is the relationship that somebody has with a business? If you're a county board member, if I own 10% of stock in a business, does that mean that that business can't apply? Um, or if a spouse or other relative, I, mean, I think we're I don't mean to be nitpicky, but we're potentially looking at some issues. So I don't know what the answer to that is. I just raise it. And then the other, and this is probably just a throwaway, uh, in good standing with the Secretary of State, assumes your corporation and LLC, or if you're just a person that works out of the back of their truck, you might not be registered and might not be in good standing because there's no registration necessary. Correct. In that case, what we often look at and what we looked at in the past was, for instance, um, hair salons, barbershops might not be a certificate of good standing type of corporation, but there's typically a business license okay. associated with the municipality in which they operate. 1099 workers, same thing. So that's where the Choose Do Page staff does the additional research to make sure is the business still open? Has the business had any issues uh, with the local municipality? So maybe more, not so much in good standing, but not in bad standing. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, Member Ozak. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I have two questions. The first one, um, both of the questions are really for Greg, but one for Connor. Um, is there a definition of what immediate family is for the county board uh, exclusion uh, factor? Is it immediate family, spouses and children, or does it go into extended family? I'm gonna punt to the state's attorney on that one. My thought. Okay. <laughs> Family being spouses and children, grandparents, perhaps. Pardon me. I believe that is the case, Member Justice. I think that the definition that was just given is uh, fairly accurate. I'll double check that with the statute. So you think it's immediate spouses and offspring? In perhaps parents would would be. Included. And parents, okay, but I not necessarily siblings. Uh, assuming no ownership with a, with a separate sibling company. Brothers and sisters, siblings. Um, I, I Generally speaking, I would say one degree of co-sanguinity if we're going to use the, the, the law school definition, but I'll confirm that with the statute and get back to you. 
Okay, that's thank you. Appreciate it. My other question is uh, for Mr. Batalov, and thank you for your presentation today. Uh, when will the link be available for the 624 webinar? Assuming the county board passes it today, we will likely liven up the link later this afternoon. Okay, great. Thank you. Certainly by tomorrow. And I, I should okay. mention that we will market it through our traditional marketing channels, our robust database, our email list, the local chambers of commerce, the local economic development organizations, the local business associations and the like. If this round is anything like the last round, I do not feel that we will have a hard time reaching the business community. Okay, but should we want to share it, you'll have it available tomorrow. Absolutely. By tomorrow. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Um, Member Renahan. I just want to chime in to sort of answer Mary's question a little bit. I think Connor was on the right track. The, our, ethics, um, our ethics statute actually does have a definition for immediate family, so we attempted to consult there. Right. Yeah, because we did adopt that language um, for the CARES Act last year, so we included that in the... Um... Okay. So any other questions? Okay, seeing none. Thank you so much, thank Greg. You. Appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much. And with that, we move on to um, approval of minutes. I move to approve the Finance Committee meeting um, minutes from June 8th, 2021. Thank you. We have a motion by myself and a second by member Pachowski. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries, thank you. Uh, we move on to budget transfers. I'll move to approve FIR 032721, uh, budget transfers, various companies, accounting units. We have a second by member Krajewski. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any Aye. opposed? Okay, the motion carries, thank you. Move on to procurement. We move to animal services, member Kaczewski. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I move on ASO 0046-21, which is an ordinance amending our section 5-71 of the DuPage County Animal and Rabbits Control Ordinance. We have a motion by member Kaczewski, a second Seven by days. member Chavez, or a uh, member Covert. Uh, any discussion on this? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Uh, any I opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Member Kajewski. Thank you. And last, Madam Chairman, I move on ASO 0047-21 ordinance that's amending section 5-32 of the County Animal and Rabies Control Ordinance. Second. We have a motion by Member Kajewski, a second by Member Rutledge. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you very much, Member Kajewski. We move on to environmental, uh, Member Rutledge. Thank you, Chairman uh, Chaplin. I move on ENR 0316-21, a resolution that is an intergovernmental delegation agreement between the Illinois Envir Environmental Protection Agency and the County of DuPage, Illinois, a joint and cooperative inspection program. We have a motion by Member Rutledge, a second by Member Covert. Uh, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you, Member Rutledge. Uh, we move on to item C, ETSB. Member Schwarzy? I can, I can see you way over there. Hello, over there. I move uh, to accept item ETSR 44-21, a resolution approving the transfer of inventory from the County of DuPage on behalf of the Emergency Telephone System Board of DuPage County to DUCOM. Second. We have a motion by Member Schwarzy, a second by Member Renahan. Uh, discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you, Member Schwarzy. We move on to item D, Health and Human Services. Member Renahan. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I move approval of HHSP 29621, a contract with Standard Companies for Trash Can Liners for the Care Center, June 23rd, 2021 through June 22nd, 2023, not to exceed $146,640. $645. We have a motion by Member Renahan, a second by Member Schwarzy. Discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Any Aye. Interest? The motion carries. Member Renahan? Thank you. I move approval HHSP 29521, a contract with American Bottling Company for beverages and fountain for the cafes on campus, July 30th, 2021 through July 29, 2022, not to exceed $50,900. 
We have a motion by member Renahan, a second by member Schwarzy. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Member Renahan. I move approval of HHSP 294-21, a contract with DV John Inc. to furnish and deliver ostomy, tracheostomy, urological and enteral supplies uh, and enteral feeding formulas for the DuPage Care Center, July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022, not to exceed $112,572. Okay, we have a mo motion by member Hen, a second by member Chavez. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you, uh, member Hen. I move approval HSSP 29321, a county contract to Benevate Inc. DBA neighborly software to support grant application and management process within the community development division covering uh, July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022 for a contract total of 45,000. We have a motion by member Renahan, a second by member Chavez. Discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Aye. Okay, the motion carries. Okay, member Renahan. All right, great. And I uh, move approval of change order HHSP 83A 20, amendment to resolution HHSP 83 20 for Echo Lab Inc. for laundry chemicals for the care center, April 24th, 2020 through April 23, 2021, to add items to the bid that were discontinued and to increase in the amount of $3,000. We have a motion by member Rantanahan, a second by member Garcia. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Okay, thank you. And we move on to judicial public safety and member Rantanahan. All right, thank you. We have one order. Um, uh, move or, I move approval of change order resolution JPSP 341-19, issued to Selco Partnership DBA Verizon to provide cell phone usage for the probation and court services, increasing funding in the amount of $30,000. We have a motion by member Renahan, a second by member Garcia. Discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you very much, member Renahan. We move on to item E, public works, member Ozag. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Um, I move for approval of FMP 030121, recommendation for the approval of a contract to Fox Valley Fire and Safety Company, incorporated for preventative maintenance, testing and repair of the non-Edwards System technology, fire, our alarm, and life safety systems for the county facilities, period August 28th, 2021 through August 27, 2022, for a total contract amount not to exceed $160,100, $148,200 for facilities management, $2,500 for animal services, $2,400 for division of transportation, and $7,000 for public works per renewal option under bid award 18153 GV, third and final option to renew. We have a motion by member um, Ozag. What was the second? Who was second? Member to start second. Uh, discussion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The motion carries. Member Ozag. Thank you. I move for approval of FMP 0321. Recommendation for the approval of a contract to Weatherproofing Technologies Incorporated for roof restoration work at the Henry J. Hyde Judicial Office facility for facilities management for the period June 23, 2021 through November 30th, 2021 for a total contract amount not to exceed $836,839.62. Contract pursuant to the Amateur Governmental Cooperation Act, Omnia Partners, R180903. We have a motion by member Ozog, a second by member Desart, and I do uh, recognize member Rutledge. Just a quick comment. Um, thank you, Chairwoman. Uh, I just wanna say thank you to staff and uh, member Dika Garcia that in, in the um, planning of this roof repair that they considered renewable energy going forward. Our question was about solar panels and things like that. And they said that nothing about this would prevent that in the future. So thank you for your attention to environmental concerns for our county. Great, thank you so much. Any other discussion? None, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Member Ozog. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I move for approval of PWP 030221, recommendation for the approval of a contract with AT&T to provide business analog lines and analog circuits for public works facilities for the period August 1st, 2021 through July 31st, 2022 for a contract total amount not to exceed $45,000 per most qualified offer per proposal P17002, third and final option to renew. 
We have a motion by member Ozog, a second by member Garcia. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you, member Ozog. Thank you, I move for approval of PWP 029921. Recommendation for the approval of a contract to Curry Motors Fleet for the purchase of one 2022 Ford F-350 4x4 pickup truck for public works for a total contract amount not to exceed $56,259, pricing and compliance with ILCS 525-2 Government Joint Purchasing Act, Suburban Purchasing Cooperative, contract number 178. We have a motion by member Ozak, a second by member Chavez, was that? Okay, thank you. Uh, discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Member Ozak. Thank you. I move for approval of PWP 029821. Recommendation for the approval of a contract to Roche Ford Commercial Truck Center for the purchase of one 2021 Ford F-150 4x4 pickup truck and one 2021 Ford Transit van for public works for a total contract amount not to exceed $50,926 Pricing and compliance with ILCS 525-2, Government Joint Purchasing Act, Suburban Purchasing Cooperative, 2021 Ford F-150 4x4 pickup truck, $28,553, SBC contract 1187, and 2021 Ford Transit van, $22,373, SBC contract number 190. We have a motion by member Ozog, a second by member Garcia. Discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you so much, Member Ozag. We move on to item G, transportation. Uh, Member Pachowski. Good morning, Madam Chairman. Thank you. I move to approve DTR 1321 in a contract and awarding resolution to Lord Construction Company for the I-355 noise abatement wall section. Uh, at county cost is $140,420.50, 100% to be reimbursed by the Illinois Toll Authority. We have a motion by member Puchowski, a second by member Desart. Discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion carries, member Puchowski. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Move to approve DTI 314-21, a approval of a warning resolution to RW Dutton Company for the Milton Township 2021 Road Maintenance Program, estimated township cost of $583,138.13. We have a motion by member Puchowski, a second by member Desart. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you, uh, Madam Member Pachowski. Move to approve DTR 31521, the Warding Resolute Cody Construction Inc. for the DuPage Campus Ring Road, uh, county cost of $947,000, and transportation $855,000, and public works $92,000. Second, Ozog. We have a motion by Member Pachowski, a second by Member Ozog. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Member Pachowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. One move to approve DTP 2021 agreement between the County DuPage and Seoba Group Inc. for professional phase one engineering services on our railroad over the West Branch of DuPage River section for a total contract not to exceed $233,018.35. We have a motion by Member Pachowski, a second by Member Desart. Discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Member Pachowski. Thank you. Finally, move to approve an amendment to DTR 16B19 and a local public agency agreement, amendment number two for federal participation between the County DuPage and Illinois Department of Transportation along 75th Street, decrease the county cost share $165,871.85. We have a motion by Member Pachowski, a second by Member Garcia. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you, Member Pachowski. We move on to item nine, uh, finance resolutions. Thank you, Madam Member Kujewski, yes. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I move to combine and approve items A, B, and C, which are all acceptance of appropriation, A, Illinois Department of uh, Health Care, B is the Illinois Family Violence Coordinating Council grant, and C is the DuPage Bar Foundation. We have a motion by member Krajewski, who was that second by? Member Desart to combine and approve? Correct. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Go ahead, member uh, Krajewski. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I move on 
FIR 0302-21, it's a resolution acceptance of the local technical assistance grant from the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning CMAP. Okay, we have a motion to second. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none. Oh, do you have a discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, all in favor? Aye. Any Aye. Other? Okay, motion carries. Member Kajewski. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I move on FIR 0320-21, which is a resolution acceptance and appropriation of additional funding for the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity Trade Adjustment Assistance Grant, $158,370. Okay, we have a motion by Member Kajewski. Second by Member Renahan. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Uh, Member Kajewski. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I move on FIR 0324-21, which is resolution placing names on payroll. We have a motion by Member Krajewski, a second by Member Desart. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Okay, the motion carries, Member Krajewski. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I move on FIR 0325-21, it's a resolution and appropriation of $15 million to choose DuPage to administer the reinvest DuPage small business grant program. We have a motion by Member Krajewski and a second by Member Desart. Discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Member Krajewski? Thank you, Mayor Chairwoman. I move on FIR 0326-21. It's a resolution approval of an agreement with Choose DuPage to administer the Reinvest DuPage Small Business Grant Program. We have a motion by Member Krajewski, a second by Member Desart. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Uh, Member Kajewski. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Last, I move on FIP 0304-21, which is a recommendation for the approval of a contract purchase order to enter into an agreement with Mesero Financial Investment Management to provide our 4.7 plan related services. We have a motion by Member Kajewski, a second by Member Chavez. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you, Member Krajewski. We move on to item 10, informational, Member Krajewski. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I move to receive and place on file informational items A, payment of claims, B, wire transfers, C, appointments, and D, grant proposal notification. We have a motion by Member Krajewski on a second by Member Pachowski to receive and place on file items A, B, C, and D under informational. Uh, any discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, that carries. Do we have any old business? Okay, so none. Any new business? Okay. Madam Chair? Uh, yes. I want to uh, um, say thank you to our public works department, our, friend, our, our Murray Snow over at uh, OEM, um, Nick Cottenmeyer, and uh, we had a lot of, uh, you know, challenges this past weekend on Sunday night um, uh, with, uh, with the storms that hit us and devastated uh, many of our communities. Uh, I was out in Woodridge Sunday night and yesterday, and um, I went near uh, Gina, Cunningham, Gina Cunningham was obviously uh, taken back by uh, the amount of damage in her, in her community, but the county was out there uh, assisting. We had a, a lot of mutual aid from surrounding communities. And uh, I just want to thank staff for, for stepping up and dealing with the tough times that were given to us. So thank you. Great. Thank you so much, member uh, DeCiani. Any other items under new business? Okay. Seeing none, I'll uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn by Desart, second by Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the motion carries. Thank you. We'll